Bonsoir. My name is Steve, and I'm going to show you how to use La Corne Rotisserie. Tonight we're going to make a rotisserie chicken, and the reason I'm doing these lessons, or actually it's not calling lessons, it's calling experiments, is because there's very little online to show you how to use this incredible tool. It's rotisserie, and basically, you adjust the flame here. Wait a few seconds. And you release. A few more seconds. There we go. And this, does the spinning of the rotisserie. Now the neat thing about this is that the flame heats up this cast iron background and perfectly puts the heat around whatever you're cooking. Now I'm going to do a chicken tonight, but I've done a red snapper on here. I've done a tomahawk on here. I've done a duck. I've done mackerel. I've done all kinds of things. But you can't go wrong. You basically have a tray in the bottom here, and it will capture any drippings from whatever you're doing. So tonight we're going to do is the rotisserie chicken, and we're going to put some potatoes down here, and some carrots, and basically your whole meal is going to be here. And this is like amazing entertainment. Um, anybody in the house will come back here and see it, they'll be like, wow, this is really neat. But let me show you a couple other things on how to use it, which you're going to see as I do the chicken doing this. So, if you pull this out, this will even slow down the, the cooking of the chicken. And then when you're ready to rest, you can pull this all the way down, out. Of course, you can lower the heat and adjust this accordingly. Now what I like to do is, I like to start with a medium temperature and then towards the end I put it on a high temperature and then I just pull it out and let it rest. Now, you're probably wondering how I do the fish. Well, oh my lord. Well, when you get the Cornell rotisserie, it does come with this little guy. And basically, you can put your fish in here. You can put basically anything that will fit. Now, online they say, you know, you can do anything as long as it fits within this range, in this cage. And it has worked fabulous for me. I've actually put like two or three fish. Oh, that's an exaggeration. Two fish. I'll try three one day. There we go. And now I'm going to get the chicken ready. And I'll show you my tips on some recipes that I came up with that does, I think are delicious and people have said it's great. Thank you. So here we are. I have my chicken, which is free range. Um, I like to tie it up once uh, on top of the butcher paper. It's just, uh, I think it's a little cleaner. Um, and then I got my potatoes here, soaking in salt water that I chopped. Now I've used uh, the little potatoes and they will cook fine um, with the rotisserie and the chicken and be ready in about here in a hurry an hour for about like a five pound chicken. Um, anything soft like a zucchini will cook rather quickly. Um, so I kind of cut it and I'll show you it towards the back. 
But right now what we're gonna do is tie up the chicken. And by the way, I'm not a chef. I just love to cook and I love to have fun doing it. One thing I love about cooking is that you can experiment. And every time I do something, I do it a little different. If it's really good, I'll take notes and write it down. But if it doesn't come out too good, well, I learn from it. And you know what? That's, to me, the fun of cooking. It's relaxing and it seems like everybody enjoys it around you. So let's get to it. Let's tie this chicken up. And I'm sure some people out there are gonna go, oh my gosh, what is he doing? He's chefs. Well, I'm not a chef. This is how I do it. Of course, wash your hands, the obvious stuff. And I start by tying one leg and give it a little overhang. I cross over, come around, and I go all the way around and I give myself a lot of string, like you can see, because I think the key to doing the rotisserie is to make it tight. And of course I forgot to do something. So I will have to edit this part. <laughs> so I will loosen my knot. There we go. So now that we're ready to get this chicken ready, at first, before I tie it, you can see I already started. Error on my part. I edited that part out. By the way, this is my first video, so I'm experimenting. <laughs> Anyways, a little salt in the inside. I like sea salt. And then some pepper, so season well on the inside. And I like coarse pepper. Now, what I did is I, I looked in my fridge and I had some parsley. I had some fennel uh, that I had left over from doing a fish. And you know, this all adds just beautiful flavor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw a lemon, a little bit of citrus in there. I'm gonna throw a couple, I just sliced these garlics, a couple of garlics in there. And I'm just gonna take all this and stick it in there. It doesn't fit, I'll take it out, but it'll just give it a nice flavor. Don't lose your chicken. Give it a nice flavor. And, you know, the, the fennel, what's nice about it, it really gives it like a flowery flavor to the chicken. Um, so it's really nice. Um, anyways, so what I first did here was I made a knot. And then I left a little extra hanging here. And I cross over. I go under, come across, and like you can see, I give myself a lot of string because I always run out. So this, make it nice and tight. Just a little knot here. you'll see that by doing this, you know, not everything has to be measured out. Just use a little sense of what you want to do. So look, now I'm gonna go, see how I'm bringing this across here? And that pulls that thigh nice and tight. And I flip the chicken, come across, all the way back. And then I find my extra little hanging string here. And I do it not. Now this is Steve's way that I find very effective. Um, you know, your butcher can do this for you. I just like to do it myself because, you know, stuff it with stuff. Something doesn't fit, you just pull it out, no problem. Now I come back and I go in a, close to where the wings are. 
and I come across, go under and over. Like that. And I know you guys can't see that very well, but that's what I did, under and over. And then I tuck that wing. And you know, some people just clip this wing off. I don't, I keep it. Come across, oops. Again, I go under the string. This holds it in place. I go over and under. And you see how all that string wasn't such a bad idea. Well, we'll see. We're not there yet. I keep tying that up. And then I come across, bring that across. And don't be scared of the chicken. In the beginning, I was like, oh, I'm going to hurt this chicken. But you know what? It's not going to get hurt. All right. Let's see. All right. Here, and just bring it nice and tight, and then I go under. Okay, I might have too much string, but that's okay. Under and in, like that, and then pull tight. Just pull the string, hold that, bring it like that, and I do one more like that. I was in the Navy and. This is how we used to tie the rope. I used to hold the rudder. Anyways, long story. All right, so I get my scissors here. And clip that. Now, this part, I like to just get a big bowl and throw the chicken in there. Now, pick my paper. Load it. Still wash this, but makes less of a mess. Okay, the reason I do this is that now we're gonna just have some fun. So here's my olive oil. Um, it's not ex virgin. This is like a sautéing olive oil. You can find it at the store. Um, and then what I do is I buy some Zeb de Pons. The herbs of Provence from France, south of France in Provence. You can find them online. Um, they sell them by dry packets. And they are just wonderful. Here's a example. Um, it's just wonderful. Um, huge flavor, just so many things with that. Uh, very popular in the south of France. Um, so anyways, I, I put it in the bottle before I put the olive oil. And I put about a quarter cup. And then I add my olive oil. And I just use a, this is an old bottle of rosé. And I just repurposed it for this. Now, I'm gonna twist my bottle. Now this has been in here for, oh, months. And it just really captures a lot of the flavor, in my opinion. And then I just, Liberally put it on there, and then I season. And don't be afraid to season. You know what's what's great is when you season this. This is all going to go into the pot. But what I do now is I rub this. Turn it, rub it, make sure I get everywhere some of that wonderful olive oil with the Zelle de Ponce. Okay, now we're gonna take our finger, uh, I'll show you here. Now I'm gently gonna stick my finger in here. I'm going to separate the skin. The skin from the breast. Do that on both sides. And I just go like that, go like that. And then I'm ready for my next part. 
Now, I'm going to take some garlic and basically I just sliced it in half. And I'm going to stick that garlic under the skin and push that as far back as I can. And then I stick another one here. There. So that's two on that side. And then I push one as far as I can. And then another. And then I save two. Now this is the fun part. Now I have these whole slices of lemon, which I'm going to put aside. And then I have these half slices. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to push the lemon in there. Don't be afraid. Just push it in there. Get it in there. And you know what? That captures the flavors in there and you're getting basically flavors from two sides, from the cavity, all those wonderful herbs. And by the way, you can use thyme. I've used thyme in the cavity. I use thyme in here. Rosemary, uh, you know, garlic and rosemary go wonderful. Um, and now I'm gonna take uh, uh, a couple leftover leeks. Uh, I'm just gonna put some leek in there. If you don't have the leek, it's okay. Look in your fridge. You have extra parsley, rosemary, whatever. You know, rotisserie is just wonderful ways to experiment. And this is the point of having this, this rotisserie. It's so much fun to just experiment and just make things. And you know what? I haven't made a single thing on there that was bad. Alright. What am I missing? Got my parsley, got... Oh, I wanted to add... Well, I gotta wash my hands real quick. Alright. Now, you can use gloves. Uh, I'm okay with washing my hands. I don't like using gloves. But now, I'm gonna take some more gel de Clance and, like, really liberally... I'm gonna be shy, because you know what? It's okay. I'm gonna put a little more pepper. I'm gonna take that whole lemon. I'm gonna tuck it under that string. And my last two garlics, I like to just pinch them under the string. In the front. I'm going to show you in a second. I know this bowl is probably making it hard for you guys to see. But again, this is my first YouTube and my first video. So I hope this helps you and you enjoy it. This is how it looks. Alright. Now, let's show you how we put this guy together. Now, it's really simple. You just comes right out. Very simple. And by the way, it comes with two. So you could literally do two chickens. If you do two chickens, I would put one to one side and one to the other side. But you would put it here, wow, like this, and then one here. But we're just doing one because I'm cooking for my honey. And all right. So I'm going to pierce the chicken on this side, not this side. So I kind of want to judge this. And it's, you know, chicken's kind of small. So I want to kind of center it, come in a little bit. And right there, if I have to adjust it, it's fine. Now I bring my chicken over. Oh, let's get all that good stuff on there. And I like to go this way. So I'm going through where the neck was. Be careful not to break your string. And try to get it right into the breast there. Push in. And it seems to hold it the best that way. And let me turn this around so you guys can see. I had an experiment with this. 
And then right at the bottom here. Oh, blah. Now, time it. And I got this tip on a video by a chef that I thought was pretty amazing. Did a really good job in showing how to use the history. I thought it was a little bizarre to use this, but it works. So I take a screwdriver, and of course it's washed. <laughs> it's a brand new screwdriver that's never been used on anything but this. And then I put it in the dishwasher. So I'll probably get it. And I just tighten it really nice so it doesn't go anywhere. And there you have it. It's all ready to go. Now I'm going to put this aside. And look how easy this is. I'm going to take this down. I'm going to rinse my hands real quick. Wash them. Okay. Alright. So let's preheat this. Should have done this a little earlier. So we like this. It really takes like probably like you gotta hold it in for like 15 seconds. Or else it'll just go out. Alright, there we go. So I'll let this preheat. And then here's our tray. Um, so Cornell. This is this wonderful tray. Wash it in the dishwasher, no problem. Um, so what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take my potatoes, and I'm going to get my clean rag. And I'm just going to throw them in the well, rag, my kitchen towel. Throw them in my little kitchen towel that I picked up on vacation last year in the south of France. It was so much fun. He eats so well over there. All right, so I got a little extra parsley there that came in. Okay, so here are my potatoes. Now I'm only cooking for two tonight, so you know, if it was a dinner party, I would do a lot more. And I mean, this chicken feeds four people easily. I'm going to take my zucchini. It's been washed. I'm just going to cut it. And I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm just going to cut it in half. Lay that there. So I got my potatoes. And then I'm going to season all this. And then... carrots on the edge here and you'll see how I do this I'm gonna flip it and just a few carrots Ain't nothing crazy but all this is gonna capture the juices of the chicken now I'm gonna season in pepper and I'm just going to lightly drizzle a little olive oil, not much, very little. So up, in we go, and I just put it almost to the edge, I don't touch it to it, uh, I'm sure it's not an issue to do that, but I don't, because I'm paranoid that it'll just crack it, but I, I have. And it didn't crack it, so. Anyways. So, oh, I did that backwards, but let's do this. No big deal. There we go. There we go. Uh, it's pretty centered. Let's turn that sucker on. And I will, you know, you don't even need a timer. Um, 
you can see the chicken cooking. So now, this is on high, and I would leave it on high if you need this chicken done in an hour. Okay? Will it taste worse? No. Um, but I think it'll be a little juicier if I just lower the heat a little bit, like medium, medium high. You know, I put it about a quarter inch from where the high is. And now we're just gonna let this chicken cook. And I will bring this so you can see it. There we go. And look at that. And I will show you in about 20 minutes what it looks like, and then I'll show you an hour and so on. So we are back. It's been 30 minutes, and the progress has been made. Now you'll notice that the chicken is starting to brown, and juices are starting to flow. Let me back up a little so you can see that. Look at the color that it's starting to form. All the juices are starting to drop on the vegetables below. My heat is at medium high, I guess, about a quarter inch from the high mark. And I'm slowly cooking this. And I even got a heads up that my spouse is going to be a little late. Is that a problem? No. I just lower the heat and just continue. Now, a little tip. This time, you want to make sure you make a little vegetable broth or chicken broth. Um, I find using something like this handy. And I just have a little bit of moisture. And not so much for the chicken, yeah, that it keeps it moist, but mostly for the vegetables. I want to keep those vegetables moist. I won't have to do this very long on the vegetables. Actually, just once I do it. Because, as you notice, the chicken is dripping now. And those, that gold, that gold that that chicken is dripping onto those potatoes will make magic. My carrots are starting to brown, so what I want to do is, I just want, I lower the heat by the way, it's a little less intense, and I just kind of move things around a little bit. Make sure everything gets moist, stays moist, that's the key. But this is so low maintenance, um, it's amazing. Now, you can do other things in here uh, with the chicken. Um, I like to do couscous. Pull this back a little, there we go. I like to do couscous. The only thing you have to do though is what I do is I pre cook the couscous, of course, and then I add the, pre the couscous in there. Um, I'll have my vegetables, whatever vegetables. Um, let's see, what did I make with the couscous last time? I took some, er uh, some, some carrots and cut them uh, in half, uh, and I laid them flat, the whole carrots on top of the couscous and I, I, I just let the chicken do its magic and do the drippings and if, added a little bit of vegetable broth just to keep the couscous uh, moist. But yeah, that's it. Alright, we'll be back in a, let's say it should be ready and probably if I wanted to in 30 minutes. But I'm going to delay it so it's going to be on a medium heat for a while until I really want to brown it. I'm going to wait till my spouse gets home 
And then I'm going to brown it and serve it. Oh, let it rest and serve. There we go. Oh my gosh. You know, the first thing you're going to notice is the smell, the aroma that's out throughout your house. And I'm not kidding. I wish the, the phone had a smell option. You know, like you can hear the volume, you can smell it. It's just amazing. It's just smells so great. So here we are. We're 40, 45 minutes into it. And the chicken has some nice color. The juices are flowing into the vegetables, giving that gold flavor to them. Just amazing. Let me give you a close up. So something I've been doing is I've been basting it about every 10 minutes with a little vegetable broth, about oh a quarter cup. Mostly to keep the vegetables moist. It's most important, you see how it's browning, those juices are dripping in there. It's just beautiful. Now, I turned the zucchinis down earlier, just so they stay moist, and then I turn them back up. But if you notice, the heat is still at three quarters. And everything is coming nicely. It's just beautiful. Now, a tip is to stir your vegetables so they absorb the juices of the chicken. Because I mean it, that is gold. That gives so much flavor. And you got the fennel, you got the lemon, you got the garlic, you got the Zelle de Provence, and all dripping down with those juices. It's just. I can't describe it. It's just beautiful. Look at that chicken. All right. We will be back when we start seeing some clear juice coming out of the chicken. That's a clue that it is ready. Starting to look really nice. Um, so the last 10 minutes, uh, I'm starting to see some juices coming out a little bit of clear. There's some indication it's almost done. I ramp up the heat. I just did it. And so I went from three quarters down, about there, to all the way up. Because now I just want to brown that chicken. The vegetables are browning. Well, let me show you. Uh, so, so they're browning, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring them a little back. Look at those beautiful carrots, how glazed they are. And now everything is under that chicken. Just going to capture that juice. Sorry, little amateur YouTuber here. But look at that. So the reason why I call this in bon soirée is because when I got this from La Corneille, they wrote for me in bon soirée. I requested it, of course, which means not just a great evening, but the whole thing with a great evening. Good food, good wine, Zeperitif, all the good stuff. So we're almost there, and I will bring you back when the chicken is done, and I demount it, and I'll show you some tricks. All well, tricks. I'll show you techniques that I figured out to take it out that makes it easy. All right, a little tip. When you're coming towards the end, Look at how beautiful our vegetables are. Really getting that nice color roasted. That gold from the chicken is just coming in. And I pulled up the heat like I mentioned earlier. And now I don't want my vegetables to 
Hit two browns, so I'm just going to pull it back a little bit. And now we'll about an inch or inch and a half from the surface. And like you can see, no issue with it handling, but look at look at the color of that chicken. And this just amazing smell throughout the house. It's just amazing. But that's what the last 10 minutes does to the chicken. There's the timer. So we're going to check on that. So I lowered the temperature all the way to the lowest setting. And I am going to just check the temperature real quickly. And it should read 165. We have 168. So we are good. Let me just go a little deeper in there. And we're still good. All right. So that chicken is done. And look at the beauty of that. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to turn off the heat completely. And just give you guys a look at the vegetables. Oh my god, this is so good. Can't wait. Now, very important. I'm pulling this. I'm going to try to do it one hand. Usually I use two minutes all the way out. So pull it out two clicks. There we go. Now, you see the difference? How that came out and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the timer I do 20 minutes and this allows the chicken to rest the juices to you know calm down in there and stay in there and all that good stuff I don't know all the science behind it but you know what I always do it 20 minutes and it's amazing I'm going to put an apron on just in case I don't want to get my leisurely shirt dirty but look at that chicken it's just unbelievably beautiful and I'm not just tooting my own horn it's just really nice so I'm just going to turn this off. Vegetables are done. The chicken looks amazing. And look how easy it is to just take this guy off. Boom. I just lay it in my vegetables. I pull the tray out. Look how easy. Bring it out here. And I am going to show you the beauty of this guy. And forgive my amateur video thing presentation but uh look at that look at that chicken i hope you can see the color the vegetables just gorgeous and the only thing i have to do is uh, take that screwdriver and loosen like that and then carve it and voila bon appetit now I'm new at this, so um, I think it's uh, you gotta subscribe or like it or whatever you gotta do. Um, I'm gonna do some more videos, and it's really just to show you what I've learned. Um, but this is my first video, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments? I uh, and especially other folks that have this rotisserie that have tried things, uh, please share with me. Um, I will share some pictures along with this video of other things I've done. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much. And Zeb de Provence, Roti Poulet.